We finish it. All right, guys, this here's the old the American. Welcome to part three. In part three, we'll be finishing my camera stabilizer. If you guys haven't seen part one or two, you guys go ahead and check that out. The links will be in the description below. All right, guys, so here are the two finished pieces. So as you can see, they're pretty uniform between the two, and they feel pretty good in my hand. So what the next step is, or you could have done this before, is your center holes. Theirs are going to have to be drilled out so you could put a bolt in there. Or a screw, depending on what you're going to use. I want to see if I can find a piece of bar stock or something like that, steel, so I could uh, put that on the, on the bottom as weight. Also, using it as a camera support. Alright guys, uh, I found I did not find any bar stock, but I found this piece of one inch tube steel. And uh, I figured it'll work. So uh, what I'm going to do is, if I got enough blade, I mean, really, you shouldn't even be using this. It is the amount of blade it has on there. But I'm going to see how far I can make it with. And uh, I'm going to see either I'll cut this end off, because this end's already at an angle. Cut this angle 90 degrees like this one is. But I don't know how far my blade will make it. I will, what I would like to do is to cut both of them off at a 45 like that. So, but I know I don't have enough blades, so I'm going to have to uh, make do with what I can. So, I know you guys uh, are going to uh, beat me up about uh, my blade's too small and it's not even an angle grinder. But, it is a metal blade. It is made for cutting metal. It has a guard on it. So, uh... I mean, Dremel makes them for cutting metal. I don't know about this stuff, but uh, I've cut it, used this to cut this before, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I should. Uh, I'm going to go get a piece of soapstone, and I'm going to mark this out. Yeah, guys, this, this is not the right way to use this tool at all, I know, but uh, it's working for me so far. Uh, I wouldn't do it at home, and if you, if you do do it, I'm not responsible. And uh, normally I wouldn't be using this leather apron, but recently, last time I used an angle grinder, I have caught myself on fire. I know you guys can laugh. Uh, yeah, my shirt's on fire. Alright guys, so the uh, angle grinder didn't cut through all the way because of my shortened blade. So uh, what I'm going to have to use is I'm going to use... Uh, a hacksaw, but the hacksaw I had broke the uh, tensioner, wouldn't tension no more because the frame was bent in it. So I made my own. So this is equivalent to a uh, uh, old bow saw, and uh, I just put a hacksaw blade in it. And I made this completely out of firewood too, and just it, it's and I just got I had a piece of string, uh, old twine on here, and I had a. Uh, piece of wood to crank it down but uh, it did eventually break so I put a piece of uh, I think it's 8 gauge wire on there and I twisted it up with a uh, screwdriver and uh, these are just more than if I took this off of here 
this whole thing would just collapse. Nothing's glued or anything. It's all by pressure. So uh, I'm going to cut this up. And it should just fly right through. It's so thin because of that grinder. And of course, this blade isn't new. It's an old blade, so it's not cut with that. There's missing teeth, that's why you see the jaw, the saw jumping around, jumping around. So once you get to that point, you basically hit it with a hammer. And it pops right off. Uh, I'm going to use the edge of this blade, which is not recommended. It should be a grinding wheel, but uh, I'm going to hurry so I'm gonna... Not saying you guys should do it, but I'm doing it. Clean the rest up with a file. Make sure there's no sharp edges. guys so that's basically what what it's gonna look like um, camera's gonna go here and uh, there's just two handles and they're real fat so I can uh, grip the camera better um, what I did with the bar steel is uh, I went and just ran a wire brush over it then scotch brighted it and uh, wiped it off with a uh, paper towel and, uh, acetone um, next step is to drill out your holes it's gonna be kind of hard with a, a round surface probably should have thought about that before all right guys I'm on a day three here we're at the drill press I'm gonna drill holes on each end of here so I could put a bolt through and then I'll drill a hole in the bottom of this handle and then I'll just thread it from the bottom. All right, guys, just so you know the speed for your drill press, go ahead and open up the top or wherever your chart is and make sure you know how thick your steel is. This is 530 seconds. So at 530 seconds under steel, that would be at 2250 RPM and then 2250 RPM is the second belt. So, mine set at the second belt, 2250 RPM. Now a lot of people, they go and they make they start with a small bit and then they go down to their final size. I couldn't find my center punch and I'm just going to go with the biggest bit from the beginning. Make sure you have lubrication. I just got a little bit of 3-in-1 oil here. You do the same for the other side. Okay guys, I got these holes all drilled out. So the next step is going to be drilling these out. Now these are the bolts I'm going to be using. And they fit in here. So they just slide in. 
But in here, in this one, I want it to be just a hair tighter. Because I'm not going to put a nut in here and epoxy it. I'm just going to use a, the bare wood. And being a hair tighter, so I'm going to grab the center shaft inside of this bolt here. So then the threads just screw into the wood. Alright guys, another thing is, make sure you have your depth stop. So you don't go all the way through that wood. Only three quarters of an inch into the wood. So... I have it set at, there's three quarters of an inch right there. I have it set just a little bit past that just so, because the drill bit's round. So I just want that point to get down there so that whole bolt will thread through. Alright guys, another thing is I slowed my drill speed down, down to 1500 RPM. And that's just because what my chart says if I want to go down 7 eighths in a piece of wood. So, you guys follow what your chart says, is what mine says. Alright, I got these drilled out, and... Somehow they're not perfectly centered, I don't know. At least they might not look like it. Maybe because that drill bit wobbled. But this here, clean it off with some a rag and degreaser, then we could paint it. Alright guys, where I'm at, it's raining outside right now. And it's real damp and cold. So I brought this inside my greenhouse and I just hung it off of some construction string here. And I'm gonna paint it with some Rust-Oleum M gloss protective enamel in black. I found that Rust-Oleum lasts a lot longer and looks a lot better than Krylon. But, um, and once again, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just doing what I like best. And for me, I prefer Rust-Oleum. Make sure you give your can a good shake for at least two minutes and uh, follow your directions on the back of the can. And on here I've already degreased this and I've not touched it uh, because if you touch it, it your oil the oil from your hands doesn't allow your, your paint to stick as well and uh, I made sure it was real dry blew it off with the air compressor no contaminants on it uh, and I you're gonna say yeah I'm in my greenhouse but I will turn uh, my ventilation fans on and I'll open the doors this way the fumes don't kill you, you know, it says use in open areas. And I'm not going to use any primer just because this is a small piece and it's just going to be roughly, it's just going to be used for filming. I mean, it's not going to be like on the back of a truck or something getting beat up. It's just going to be, you know, you, you handle it like a camera, I guess. I got my ventilation fans in, the back door cracked, and uh, I think we're ready to paint. Make sure you're not going to get overspray on anything. coat one let that cure for about one hour and then we'll come back and put on a second coat all right guys so about 30 minutes have passed so I'm gonna go ahead and apply a second coat Coat two. I think I might put on one more coat. Been about another half hour. Time to throw on coat three, which is the last coat for this project. All 
All right, code three is on there, and now I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. Well, this will be fully cured at 24 hours. You can touch; it's dry to touch in about four hours, and then you can handle it in about five to nine hours, depending on your temperature. And uh, says all I got all this information off the back of this can tells you a lot. So tomorrow after 24 hours to come back and then I'll uh, assemble it. Guys, something else I was looking at was tops of these things. I was just thinking uh, I got some walnut scraps and want to just cut out square, glue it on the top of these things. And then I'll have some walnut accents for the top of these. Just, just to see what it looks like, play around with it. Got my piece of walnut here. And you can see it's all burned up from the table saw. But uh, I'm gonna go over the band saw. I'm gonna cut out a square, maybe plane this down. I'm gonna get the plane. I'm gonna plane this down, and then we're gonna file it and you know, sand it smooth so it looks real good. And then I'm gonna throw on some kind of stain clear coat or something. I'm gonna be using my Stanley Number no. Four bench plane here. I restored this, and I'll make a video at some point on how I did that. I'm gonna plane this down just so I can get them table saw marks out of it. record I just uh, filmed I did all this here I cut out my walnut I didn't film that but then I filmed this gluing and I forgot to press the record button so but you guys know how to glue things I mean I so I got a uh, type bond 2 in there and uh, I know it's not gonna be that strong because it's end-to-end -end grain you know well no it's actually end to side grain but uh, I'm gonna wait till this dries I'm gonna shape it back into this curved section here. It's a shame that I can't put it back on the lathe because that would just make this so much easier. But I don't, so I'm gonna do this all by hand. I got my walnut accents on there. And uh, they're just glued there with type on too. And I threw them back on the wood lathe, sanded them back up, made them the same shape. And uh, they look pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sand these up probably at a 120 or 220 and then I'm I'm probably just gonna go throw a, a one coat of poly on it all right so the polyurethane's on there and what you notice with the polyurethane is look at that walnut you can really tell how much it pops the polyurethane just comes right out of there that's what I like about this walnut it's beautiful wood even just a scrap like you guys saw what the scrap was and uh, that scrap most people would have thrown away. I keep them because just for pe pieces like this, for just a small piece in the trash can, to absolute beauty. I forgot you got to drill holes, one in the center, and then if you're going to use a smartphone, you just measure out from your camera lens in the center. And then where you want your phone, either to the right or the left, and then you drill your phone, your hole there. All right, guys. So I drilled up them extra two holes that I forgot. But I wish I had remembered because it messed up my paint. But I don't feel like repainting it. You're gonna go get a smaller bolt than what you than what you use. These are quarter inch bolts. And. Say if you got a DSLR or anything with like a center, uh, with anything with a center pin, that's what you would use that for. If you got a smartphone, put it through this this hole over here. And then, then you get uh then you get one of those spring things, they're on Amazon. I got one around here somewhere, I have to make a video of it. 
But when you're through with that, you get your other bolts that go through here and then you will put them on. All right, so I got my bolts and I got these neoprene washers. I'm gonna slide one on one side. I'm gonna grab my bar. Put that on the other side. And then I'm gonna put one more here. Put one here. Then I'm gonna get some epoxy. I'm gonna sort of run a thread on there. Okay, so I got some JB weld. And I'm gonna open it up here. Squirt just enough what I think I need. Go ahead and close that back up. I got myself just a drinking straw. I like, I usually like using popsicle sticks. And the end I cut off with like a little spoon. So I'm gonna put some of that JB weld in there. I shouldn't even be using this much. Alright, so that's in there. Go ahead and move this out of the way. Bring in your bar. I'm just going to screw it. I'm going to screw this on here. I'm going to have to go grab myself a wrench. Alright, so I, I just got a socket right here. Said, I don't want that tight. It's enough so it can move and it's snug. Okay, so I got those on there. Next step, just put that bolt in the middle and then you're ready to mount your camera. Alright guys, here it is, the finished product. You can easily put your camera on there. And here are some nice shots that you get with it. Little no shake. And just because it moves, you could come into the flower and go all the way around and then do the back out shot. Here's the finished product. If you haven't seen part one or two, please go ahead and check those out first. This has been the Oldie American. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.